What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of the Undergrad Forum. Now, in this episode, we're going to talk about some of the aspects of what you will need as a third-year medical student to do well in your rotations. We'll talk about simple supplies you'll need to have on you, how to present well, um, how to see your patients. Each of these will be a video. Today, we'll talk about what do you just need as a third-year medical student that you didn't really need uh, during the first two years. First thing, this I mean, you had this during the first two years. I made reviews before. It should be pretty obvious. You're going to need your stethoscope. There's no question. You're always going to have it like around your neck when you walk around. Um, I keep it in my coat pocket because I don't like it around the neck. Um, but you're always going to need a stethoscope. This is the uh, Lithman Cardiology 3. I've made like two reviews on it by now. And uh, with the bell and the diaphragm. Excellent stethoscope. Most medical students will have this one, you'll notice. Um, some will have the electric one, um, but for the most part, you won't see anything lower quality. Um, I think the Cardiology 3 and like the Cardiology Master and the electronic one are the three main ones you'll see on the uh, on the ward. So link below if you want to check them out. I got them all listed there for you so you can see them. So that was an obvious one, stethoscope, right? Um, so what, what do you need next? This is also kind of obvious. You're going to need a pen light to some type. You can have these like disposable ones that kind of work like this, but you can kind of tell it has like a yellow hue to it. Um, these are fine, they're disposable. Um, I have a few of them. And you, you can also have like a nice one. Like I have this like nice wall challenge, like has this like nice halogen bulb to it. You can like replace the batteries and you can like replace the bulb if it ever goes out. Um, big price difference though. These things are like a few bucks. This thing is like 45 bucks. I got this thing as a gift, so you know, I like it, um, but you know, if you want it, get it, it's nice, but you don't have to. You can just deal with these. Um, perfectly fine. Um, there, there is a benefit though, I'll say. Having both is kind of nice. Like when I'm in any clinic, I just like using this one because it's nicer and it kind of lights up really well. But um, when I know I'm gonna be like in the ER or I'm gonna be somewhere where I'm like throwing my jacket around, I'll just put this one in there just because I don't want to lose my good one. And um, you know, I won't be able to watch it. So things get lost in the hospital. Kind of nice to have both, but if anything, just pick one. Doesn't really matter if you're fancy and you have and you can get someone to pay for it and get this one, or if you just buy it yourself, who cares? But for the most part, most people will have these little cheap dinky ones, but these do kind of burn out. They're not great. Um, some students will have like this like white LED. Uh, I think they got them from like Home Depot or somewhere. It's like it's like a really bright flashlight practically. It is like a pen light still, but I don't like those too much because I had a few students like just do it on me just so I can see what it feels like, and like you get this like afterglow effect. It's a very bright light. Um, I think if it's like a sharp white LED, it might not be the best to shine in someone's eyes, but that's just my opinion on that one. Um, oh, before we get to these, so this is the bare essentials. So stethoscope, pen lights, those we talked about. The third, prop. this might be more important than anything, having cheap pens. Um, you know from my channel, like I make reviews about fountain pens, and like these fancy roller balls that I like. Why am I carrying these cheap little, what are these called? Big grip pens. Why? Why don't I have anything nice in my pocket? The reality is, I used to carry around like this nice, um, what's this called? A Pilot J uh, Parker Jot around with me. And I, I mean, this is my second one. I lost my first one. So when you carry nice pens, things just kind of get lost. Like you're riding around, like you're at the station, you're going to go see your patient, you leave things around, other people borrow your stuff, you're too busy to remember where it went, they never see you to give it back. So it's nice just to have like an array of cheap pens like in your pocket. So when someone wants to ask for one, you can just let them use yours. And if they forget to give it back, you don't see them, whatever, it's not a big deal. You don't feel bad. You just get rid of the pen, get a new one. Um, and it's not bad to have a variety of colors. Um, like when I take notes or do my scut sheets, I do make this like differentiation in color. I just use the black and the blue. I don't know why I have this one. Uh, black and uh, the red, I mean. Um, so have some cheap pens. People will be asking you as a medical student for pens all the time. It almost feels like that's one of your jobs as a medical student to have pens ready for other people. Uh, that's not, I mean, it's a, it's a funny joke, but the point being people need pens and hey, if you have one, it just makes their life easier, why not? And uh, if you have little cheap ones you don't care about, um, you can just get new ones, so. There you go. So now to more of like the fancy medical supplies. Reflex hammers. Uh, neurology service will make a big thing out of this. What kind of reflex ha hammer do you have? I have this one. Uh, link below if you want to check it out. But um, I, I don't remember what it was called. Sorry. Uh, I think it's like the Schroerne uh, flex hammer. But there's different types. You can get like this one, which is like a hammer. It's very heavy. It has like this thing to do it to the scraping, like on the bottom of the foot for the Babinski sign. It has like a nice feel to it. It's all made out of stainless steel. It's kind of heavy. It's got some weight to it um so 
I liked this one for that reason, and I found that it, the reason why, actually, I'll tell you why, the reason why I bought this one, as opposed to the other ones, you can get, like, the Tomahawk version, which is kind of like a triangle one, which most offices will have, and you can get this other one that's kind of like the circular one with, like, this long rod on it. All below, you can see. Or you can get this one with the plastic handle. Um, I chose this one with the metal handle because uh, when I was on neurology, I like I played with the reflex hammers of whoever was around, and I just liked the way this one felt. And more importantly than anything, I was able to get good reflexes. Um, so if I were, like, personally for me, when I was using the tomahawk, really hard to get a good reflex. Didn't have much weight. Um, the bias at my school with neurology services, they kind of like these better anyway, so I was probably, they probably biased me into it. But it does feel better, and I do get better reflexes, so I, I recommend this one. But play with you know the, the reflex hammers you can find on the wards. Ask people to borrow theirs for a little bit and see what it's like, and pick the one that's best for you. But all listed below so you can kind of play around and read, read the reviews on like the internet and what people are picking. But I like this one. It works well. A little heavy, but I kind of like the weight to it. Uh, and it looks like a hammer, which is kind of fun. Tuning fork. No, we're not PNS. No, we're not instrumentist, but you do need a tuning fork. Uh, 128. Uh, I guess it's a C, but the key, what it sounds like, it vibrates. Why do you need it? Do you absolutely need it? That's the question. If you want to perform a proper neuro exam, uh, it's nice to have. Um, reflex hammer will check reflexes and check various signs by using the bottom of this, this little sharpie point. Uh, Vibratory sensations checked with 128 hertz reflex uh, for, uh, tuning fork. Excuse me. Um, I okay. So when we were in neurology service, they told us like you guys need to have a reflex hammer, and you need to have a tuning fork, and you need to have an ophthalmoscope uh, because what do they say? You know you can't. The neuro exam is not complete until you've checked reflexes, you've checked the vibratory sensation to be intact, and you've done a fundoscopic exam. Unless those three things are done, you have not done a full neuro exam. And I was like, okay, you know, like I was digging the neuro rotation, a lot of fun, and I was like, I like this, and like, I really, I mean, you've seen from the video on the physical exam I have, like, we just enjoyed the physical exam. Uh, it's just something I kind of love. And I was like, I want to do a proper neuro exam. I have, like, you know, this time on neurology. I want to learn it well. So I was like, whatever. I'll get a good hammer and I'll get this tuning fork. It was like 10 bucks, you know, not, not, not the end of the world. And, um,. So I can do a proper exam. It came in really handy later when I was doing my outpatient rotation. And the uh, the attending I was working with was like, hey, can you do a neuro exam on this patient? And I was like, yeah. And then he like stops me before I go in the room. He's like, wait, do you have, do you have a tuning fork? And I was like, got it right here, man. I'm good to go. And he's like, good. Um, so, you know, out of random example, but like having the proper tools is kind of seen as being nice. Um, he should have had one like in the clinic, like in a drawer somewhere, and he did. But the point being, you don't always have it around. It's like 10 bucks. People like it when you have it. And if you want to do like a thorough neuro exam, it's nice to have. You just hit it. You should hear that tone, and it vibrates, and you can feel you put it like on people's spots. So nice to have just uh, part of neuro exam. Other thing neuro exam will tell you is you should have an ophthalmoscope. Now, that's a terrifying thing. Ophthalmoscopes are not cheap. Uh, well Challenge, the main player for ophthalmoscopes, they have the coaxials, they have like this, the panoptic, um, they have the little pocket ones, and you can pick what, and there's other brands out there like American Diagnostics, the one I use called Optis, it's like this little one, you go like this, you just turn it on, and is it on? No, is it on? There you go, is it on? Oh, no. Yeah, it's on. Uh, there's a little light to it. And the nice thing is there is no dial to fix. And every time I use, so I'll take a well challenge off the clinic wall and I'll use it to look at someone's eye. Then I'll just take this one out and take a quick look. Every time I get a better view with this, it's a larger view and it's more clear. There's no riff raff with the left and right clicky. And really, even when you do use a well challenge, you kind of adjust for the um, focus. It barely helps. I mean, it, it does help, but it's not the end of the world. Um, so. I recommend this one, the Optis. Uh, I put a link to the website. Um, it's from the UK, so you're gonna have to pay like shipping. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's called the Optis by Ophthalmos. Clever name. Come on, they're playing off Opto. But um, anyway, so this is the one that I recommend. It works really well. A lot of people in school have it. It's convenient. Um, I also put a link to the Welch Allen one. That one's also recommended by most people. The the pocket one so it's like small like this but it has a little dive by wall challenge and you can like put in triple a batteries this one's also triple a so it's nice there's no recharging and you know there's no like um other part to it so that's convenient um or you can buy a really fancy big wall challenge coaxial or you can buy the panoptic 
if you are gonna like really go into opto or neuro man buy that panoptic it's so nice it's like this big but once you see you see the entire retina it's, it's just beautiful these like you can see chunks and you have to kind of like move around to zoom and see but with that ophthalmoscope you can see the whole thing so i recommend this one or the pocket ophthalmoscope from um watch Allen. and if you're fancy get the big one because why not um and all this stuff i put links so you don't have to like, go googling too much um so you can find it oh uh, let's see okay so other things you will need everyone's going to carry this max what's it called maxwell's quick medical reference everyone's going to have it why because it's just just stuff that you should always know um they have like little acls cards i'll tell you what i like about this it's not actually this little emergency stuff so it has normal lab values in the orange there excuse me you can see them there uh, with my own notes um, comes in handy because usually you'll like look on the computer for labs and it'll have I mean, you'll like know most of them that are kind of common but you'll kind of forget sometimes so it's nice to look up if you don't have that little normal range on your computer when you're looking um, normal lab values again um, drug levels helpful equations um, how to write an admin note various notes history and physical exam you know that um, neurological exam it has the whole thing in purple here so i like that um, and it has the mental mini mental exam the coma scale the dermatomes the other day we had a guy come in i think he had oh, he had shingles and the attending was like what's the dermatomal distribution mom and i was like let me look <laughs> you know and he and he didn't know himself he's like yeah can you bring one of those uh, dermatome maps out and i was like right and i was like got it for right here doc yeah. no i'm kidding uh don't act like that's annoying but no really though he was just like what's a dermatome and i'm like let me double check and he didn't know himself he's like yeah there it is and we so we could we could figure it out um so you don't have to know everything and there's like white spots in the back like white paper you can like take your own notes and it has the um romberg um, eye chart which you got to be at six feet away which is at the bottom of the uh, bed from the patient which is kind of perfect and so it has a ruler it has your eye thing it has keynotes it's a couple of bucks everyone will have it and i think they'll expect you to have it because my tenant was like bring out your dermatome map like he thought i should have one so yeah other thing this is a game changer this if you get nothing aside from the stethoscope um from this in the pens the only other thing you should have is this pocket medicine when you're on inpatient and or on outpatient everything you need to know is in this book people will tell it doesn't these tabs are mine but it'll be like this without the tabs and now um it's like the purple edition so this green's the older one the purple came out but i think it's a wait list right now i don't know but i put both links to the green and purple i don't know if there's much of a difference to be honest with you but um the nice thing is it just pretty much tells you what you need to know so let, let, let's just take a random example i don't know let's pick something fun pituitary disorder that's not like fun um let's go to oh seizures okay so that sounds like fun so we'll talk about it'll go say okay so if you have a patient who's coming in for seizures um what what is a seizure what is epilepsy what are the different types of seizures how do you diagnose it it just kind of walks you through it um what are the etiologies of a seizure the abcde um what are the clinical manifestations how do you clinically evaluate someone what diagnostics say should you order what are your treatment ideas how should you treat status epilepticus so in one page front and back we've just gone through everything you should essentially know about seizures it's very tight it's very to the point it's very clinically relevant and it has citations to everything you need to know from like and they usually cite like new england journal of medicine so really fancy yeah or like jama really really excellent next page here in alcohol withdrawal can't tell you how many times i've looked at this thing see what protocol back page here is on stroke i mean this thing is just gold um everyone will have one i think this in this is just like you're kind of expected to have it's like an unspoken thing i think even at sometimes um so pocket medicine the purple one the green one just came out and if it's and it's so tiny if it's into your lab coat it's convenient and it really has everything you need it's kind of like taking up to date and squishing it and just taking the core of what you need so it's nice last thing what else do i have here is this or you can use like a small little notebook i like these because it's kind of like this size so it's like they kind of go together I can put both of them in the same pocket in the white coat. Why I like this is like you're always going to be taking notes to some degree, and I didn't like taking notes just on. This is a personal preference, so you can just like take notes and just kind of like keep going back or like take off notes and hand them over to someone. Kind of like having a sticky note, but a little bit bigger. Um, I got these like at Costco, so like a big box, really convenient. But um, it's just something I like having in the lab coat. It fits. I can take notes. I'm comfortable. I it's not like the strong back on it, so I can just write. Um, note taking, you'll be doing it constantly. People are going to tell you to remember this. People will tell you like 20 things to write down and go get set up so you can do like a paracentesis or whatever. So nice to always have notes available. And it, it, does, it doesn't look bad either. It's like you're ready to take notes. You're ready to work. You're ready to study and learn. So here's some basic essential supplies you'll need for third year. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll mention, which is going to be kind of goofy and cheesy, but I think it's critical is have a good attitude. Um, 
as a medical student on the team, you are there to learn, and you're also, I mean, you're there primarily to learn. Everyone knows that. I mean, they're not going to expect you just to work like a horse because you can't do that much. But you can learn, and you can contribute significantly to your team. Like, you can have an impact and make everyone's life easier and provide good patient care. Like, the patients will remember you as a medical student if you worked hard and, like, you were caring. Um, the point being, if you have like a positive, upbeat, good attitude, you're part of a team. Remember that. It's not just you alone. So when you're part of a team and people are happy to have you around and you're fun and you're positive and you're full of energy, willing to do whatever work they want to make the team kind of move and have the day go by faster and get more work done, you're just going to be a golden asset. You'll do better. They'll give you more responsibility. You'll get to see better patients. They'll do more to teach you because you're fun to be around. You're making it easier for them. So why not? Um, so last thing, there is no link in this subscription for that or link whatever the saying is uh you know you can't buy that one you can't but it's all in your mind have a good attitude be upbeat uh this is third year you've been waiting to be like a doctor this is like where you get to act like one and be part of a team and like start becoming one so enjoy it take it in it's the best time of, of your life possibly who knows i'm sure it'll get better but it's so much fun have fun with it guys as always enjoy your studies have a good day